Okay, now uh, I assume those were easy for you, and I've got the paper tutor. You can check your answers if you want. At the bottom, it talks about using the parentheses and doing the work inside of the parentheses before you do the work outside of the parentheses. Do you remember that a little bit? Well, it's right there. We'll give examples. If you turn the page to uh, page 13, you will see uh, another four problems at the top and another ten problems at the bottom. It's using, like I said, some of that uh, square and square root values that I urged you to write out earlier. If you did that, then you're in a fine position to handle this. Uh, don't feel intimidated. Work within the parenthesis up top. Get that little principle. Uh, that's important. And then on the bottom, on the, the square root and all of those values there. Uh, I trust you can handle that. I'm not concerned for you. Same thing if you move to page 14. Um, in fact, if you want to pause, and then I'll shift to 14 with you. Okay? Great. Now I'm picking back up because I assume you paused. I didn't make my cameraman pause, but you're going into a little more detail here uh, with the numbers. Uh, if you can do it in your head without a calculator, it builds a, uh, a times tables in here that will make your life simpler by the time you get to the end. So it, please don't over rely on a calculator, though on some problems, it would be of value, but we'll talk about that and, and ask us. On the checkup, the work is simple. It goes back to the beginning. I think you can handle all of that, um, except for maybe the fraction part, and then we use the paper tutor or come ask us questions. That's what we're here for, but it's just inserting values and making your progress. Um, I'm going to look here at page 15. We go to a new place. I want to do a new section. All right, this would be a great accomplishment for one day, wouldn't it? The most math you ever did in your life in one day. We'll talk about that later. Thanks, guys. I'm having fun. Hope you are, too. Okay, happy day. We want to look at pages 15 to 17. Uh, what we're dealing with are negative numbers, at combining negatives and positives, uh, and subtracting negatives. It tends to get a little bit confusing, uh, so it's really helpful. The students who get this principle right tend to sail right on through the next few books and steps. So uh, basically, uh, what you're doing is combining uh, material along the number line, this being zero. Of course, this is the positive side, and this is the negative side. And if you start combining numbers that are positive and negative, the principle is really based on this. I was showing a student today, if you're combining a, uh, say, now this is not in your book, this is out of my head, so if you work with me, I hope it didn't confuse you, a plus two with a minus six, okay? Very simply, you learn to work with the number line. A negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if you come a negative 6, you come that far, and you're in negative land. Then you add a 2, you come back how many? 2. That's how you represent it. I hope you understand that you're still in negative land right here. Now what you do to get that value is you take this number and this number. You choose the large number, and what this teaches you to do is to subtract the small number from the large number. Forget the sign. The sign doesn't matter. Do this. Six take away two, of course, is... All right, there you go. But you keep the sign of which one? That whole paragraph teaches you to keep that sign, the negative four. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. You came down six. You went back a positive 2, you're still negative. And then you're at a negative 4. We'll do some more of that. Now pause that, and if you will, make sure you pick up that point. And that's what absolute value means. You just drop the sign, subtract the value, and keep the sign a little larger. We'll do some more with absolute value later on, uh, even for the test. They have a little bit of that on the AccuPlacer test. It's very simple. Okay. 
pause right now and we're going to go on uh, to the bottom of page 15. Okay, we're on page 16 now. 15 uh, was pretty straightforward. Uh, at the bottom was not that uh, consequential. Uh, it talks about a review of what I just said. And you can do the material there, I think. In the middle of page 16 is a little box that says, Remember, you take the absolute value, subtract the small from the large, keep the sign of the larger value. Some kids think that the negative 6 is smaller than the plus 2. It's not. Okay, it's the six is larger than the two. So it happens to be negative on that last example. Now here, problem number two on 16, I wanna walk through that one because it's a good thing to, when you're combining values, they want to uh, do the very thing. I tend to connect the positives and then the negatives so I can determine which one is greater. And you know, 56 plus 23 is how much? You know, six and three is nine and 2 and 5 is 7. So together we have 79. It's a plus value. Now, negative 18 and negative 20. If somebody takes $20 from you, and then the next day they come back and take 18 more, did they give you money positive? No, no, no. You add two negatives, you get really negative. Remember the negative line? You come way down there, you keep going negative, very negative. You lose 20 bucks and you lose 18 bucks, you lost how much? 38 bucks, there you go. Make sure that is what you have. Okay, what is 38 from 79? Well, eight from nine, of course, is, you know, way too much. Ah, you know that. All right, three from seven, of course, is 41. There you go. And what's the sign of the larger number? Aha, uh -huh. there you go, it's plus, there you go. That's how you do it, guys. Easy? I know. Do the rest of your problems. Okay? And then we're going to pick it back with uh, page number 17. Okay, guys. Uh, on page 17, uh, it's pretty explanatory there. It's talking about we are doing addition and subtraction. Uh, we're going to move to multiplication on the next page. Uh, but I want you to keep this and not get confused. Uh, you know, numbers can be so confusing. Uh, uh, some kids. Uh, we did a school for 10 years in a part of town, and my students were so helpful. They taught me so much Spanish. Uh, they were telling me about the three Anglos that got trapped on the other side of the border, and they were trying to get back. There were three of them, and they couldn't get back, and they couldn't figure out why. But everybody knew over there in Mexico because there was no trace passing. Uh, moving right along, um, it says at the bottom of 17, you want, I know, I lost, you're with me, right? We're together on that. Immigration, you know, it's, it's an issue. You've got to be careful here. Uh, you have to subtract a negative 18 from a negative 78. Now, what they do is they get uh, interesting here. They take the negative 78, and a good thing to do is use a parenthesis when you subtract. I said, don't put it that close, okay? Uh, it was too close, it was trace passing maybe. No, it, it, was, it was subtract a minus 18, okay? And that's a little ugly. Do you remember the rule with a negative of a negative when you subtract a negative? What happens is your negative 78. Oh, that's bad, I'm sorry. The minus of minus becomes a plus 8. I'm trying very, very hard there. Make sense? Now, do you remember the rule? You subtract the small number from the large number and keep the sign of which one? You got it. 78 take away 18 is 60. And the sign of the larger one is right there. Negative 60 is the answer. That is a habit. We need that. Please learn this skill carefully. The uh, problems that follow, you can work with and become skillful at. Okay, you have more chances. Thanks. Put it on pause.